Welcome to the Agile Wire. Brought to you by Wisconsin Agility. We want you to get agile and stay agile. Now here are your hosts, Jeff Bubbles and Chad Beyer. And we're recording. All right, kick us off, Jeff. All right, we got Mary Iqbal on the podcast today. Mary, you are organizing a new massive conference called Scrum Day in Madison, Wisconsin, and we're here to talk about it. So, I mean, coming out of COVID, in-person conference, never been done before in this community. Like, why, 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 why now? Why this big conference? I went to a conference, I don't know, a couple, six months, maybe a year back, and I, I was sitting at the conference going, these speakers are okay, but I think I could do better, right? And so I'm doing this conference to bring together the speakers that I want to hear from. I want to be inspired when I go to conferences. So that's that's really what I had in mind when I'm putting together this conference. And the other reason why now is actually because of COVID. I think it's time for us to get back together, reconnect, right? I, I, I went to an on-person or an on-site on, on -site meeting, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and it was weird, right? It's it's weird even going to coffee with people, right? Because they're close, they're they're close, and we're just not used to them being close. And I, I think it's be, it's time to get back on the horse, right? Yeah. Get out there, meet people, reconnect, right? We we used to love this stuff. We used to love getting in, out there, getting to know people, being inspired, hearing the latest ideas. And it's time for us to get out of our basements, right? Get back out there. And get on with it. So that's why I'm doing this. Is I want to reconnect. I want to hear from the best speakers, yourselves, others. They were all, everybody at this conference was was chosen. Like we did not even do a call for papers. I sat down with a group of people and I asked, who do you want to hear from? And that's how we came up with this list of people, all deliberately chosen, all experts in their fields with compelling stories to tell. So that's why. That's why now. And I got to tell you, I'm excited about this. I'm passionate about this. I think it's going to be a great day. And the thing is with all conferences, I think the speakers are important. Yes. But also the engagement of the people is even more important. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a lot of networking activities. I think we're going to do a, a speed dating networking activity where people can like reconnect, um, collaborate with each other and change the way that we're doing things together. That's awesome. So if you don't mind, can I give a little behind the scenes look of what we were even working on this morning for the, for, for the conference? That would so, be fantastic. So, so, um, yes, Jeff and I are speaking at the conference. So we, we got, we get the behind the scenes look and this morning, Mary, um, you, you basically set up a, a meeting with some of the speakers and we came together and you had already done some pre-work with some uh, potential or actual attendees, I believe. Right. And built some personas around who the audience may be. And so instead of just running a conference where you have the call for speakers to submissions and everyone submits what they want to talk about, you're actually taking it a step further and you're really like you're tailoring it for the people who hopefully are going to show up. And I think that's awesome. Like as, as, as attendee, uh, sorry, as an attendee of that this morning, I, I was telling Jeff afterwards, like how much energy I had from the creative process, because you get speakers, right. Who are already pretty passionate about things they want to say. And then we get together and we start collaborating and brainstorming on themes and the tracks. And like, and I know this happens in a lot of other conferences, but I don't know. I, I think it's the right way to do it. I think it's really cool. And I think it's going to make for a better impact and outcome for, you know, scrum day. Um, and of course, selfishly, right. Like, if you're going to do an in-person conference, like for us, we don't even have to travel for it. Like all of us are local, right? Yeah. In the capital city of uh, Wisconsin, in the United States here, but yet bringing global speakers in. So I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a blast. And I don't think we're done brainstorming yet, right? Like I, or we're not done even creating what what the, uh, the day is going to gonna, gonna um, unfold like. So I, I'm super excited. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I, I got to tell you, I, I appreciate both of your input this morning, right? We're, 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 I'm going to use a phrase here. We're eating our own dog food, right? We're treating this like a product. 
and we're yeah. starting off with what's the vision and then we're asking ourselves well well what well i should say what is the product and then we're looking at personas and asking what do our customers need from this conference and we're tailoring it the way you would tailor a product and so your input right the input of those who i i conduct a lot of focus group interviews to, to put together those personas. All of that is going to come together and hopefully make a better product. And you're yeah. part of it. The customers are part of it. We're doing this together. Yeah. Yeah. We've been a part of a lot of conferences where, you know, they tell you a theme, like, can you try to make it around this? And can you pull this in somehow? And, and Chad and I, even when we go over there, you know, we hear the keynote speaker maybe, and we're like, okay, let's try to take that and I'll incorporate this into our talk. And we'll try to like sync things yeah. together, you know, just to like tie nice nice correlations for people. So they kind of have this consistency throughout the day, but you know, that doesn't happen all the time. And here you're starting in the beginning and getting everybody involved. Who's going to be doing the talks to like build this together in a collaborative nature, which I think is just an awesome thing. And I see it on LinkedIn too. Like you're just, you're building a community of people that are helping you promote it, helping you get the word out about it. And it's not just you. I know you're spearheading it and doing a ton of work, but like you're getting a lot of people involved. And I think that's going to make all the difference in this conference. Thank you. I, I gotta I gotta give a shout out to some of our sponsors, right? We've we've already got some sponsors that I'm I'm actually quite excited about. So new new resources consulting, um, local sponsor here in the Madison area. Um, of course, Scrum.org is a sponsor. Beacon Technologies is sponsoring Smart Solutions, K Force, um, lots of great sponsors. So those sponsors are going to be um, of course talking about the event in advance, but also they'll be at the event. Um, you'll get a chance to meet those sponsors. They're gonna be some of the exhibitors that'll be um, participating with us in this product on Scrum Day. Yeah, that's awesome. There's a lot of time and, and money and energy that goes into running a conference. When you're running an in-person yeah. conference, that's amplified, right? It is a lot of work, but I'm actually loving every minute. I don't, I don't know why. It's just, it's something I love. This idea of we're here to share. We're here to learn from each other. We're here mm -hmm. to take the best ideas and talk about them and make them better, right? Yeah. So... Can we give our yeah. listeners maybe a little bit of a, a teaser, like beyond Absolutely. just the organization of it, like what is the outcome impact we're going to try to make for the attendees? So some of the things, I'm actually gonna have to bring up my notes because I want to say it precisely. We had a, we had a speaker uh, conversation this morning where we talked about what are some of the things that our target market is looking for in a Scrum Day conference. Um, so we, we looked at some of the focus group interviews and the outcomes of those interviews. And we talked about that. So Scrum Day is going to start off with a keynote, right? And then we're going to go into breakouts. And in those breakouts, each breakout has a target market, right? There's going to be breakouts for scrum masters, a breakout room for product owners. There's going to be a series of speeches there. We'll have a breakout room for executives and leaders. We'll have a breakout room for developers and then a separate one for connections, right? Connectivity. And so and that's going to be all about really networking. And so for each one of those breakout rooms, we want to talk about what's the story arc that makes sense for that breakout room. So together with the speakers this morning, we did some brainstorming. We looked at those personas that you mentioned earlier and we asked, what do they want, right? What is their deepest need? From all of the feedback we got, what are they saying to us? And from that deepest need, what's the theme that we wanna cover in that breakout room? So for example, some of the theme ideas that we're still, we're still kicking around some of these, uh, but for the Scrum Master, we're looking at connect collaborate, change. I really like that. Changing that paradigm from focusing on outputs or volume to focusing on value. So for Scrum Masters, that, that's the theme that came up a lot. And then for, for product owners, um, it, that's the hot seat, right? And so in the product owner um, discussion, we talked a lot about product owners turning pressure, the pressure that they're under, taking that and converting that into progress. And then for the developer breakout room, we talked about how do we make sure that we are providing value, right? We want to change the world for the better. It's really way, the way I articulate that. Um, and how do I make sure that my work connects into that? Right? How do I connect the dots all the way from what I'm doing to the value that we're providing to our customer? Because I do think developers, this is a little bit glass half full for you, but they want to, their work, they want to change the world for the better. I think a lot of us do want to change the world for the better. And so sure. I want to understand how my work contributes to that value that we're, we're providing. For leadership, alignment, guidance. How do I take that information and communicate that to a board of directors to explain what we're doing here? That's the big, the big money question, right? <laughs> for, for our executives. And then uh, we didn't talk too much about the, the, the networking room, but, but the way I think of that room 
it's, it's about making connections, learning yep. from each other, give ideas, right? Uh, give, give advice, get advice. Yep. All, all, all there, get to know each other. That's, those are some of the themes we talked about. And I got to say a special shout out to the speakers, including yourself who participated in this. I'm always astonished that when you get a, a group of people together in a room, the outcome that you come up with is so much better than any individual could have come up with their on, on their own, especially when the people who are participating are experts. It was just phenomenal to me that in such a short amount of time, we could really crystallize the feedback and take it down to what are they saying? What do our customers want from this product? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the thing that I was energized by too, was the fact that almost everybody in on the call, we all agreed, like there's some change theme here. So let's, let's run with that and, and, you know, make an impact. Like it isn't just like show up, speak and, you know, walk away, but like, let's make some change happen by helping the people who are coming to the show or coming to the conference. So um, anyway, looking forward to it. It's uh, what Thursday, September 14th this year, 2023 in Madison, Wisconsin at the, what is the venue? It's at the, the Alliant Alliant Energy, Energy Center. Alliant Alliant Energy Energy Center. Center. Let me tell you why I picked them. I picked them because of the parking. I don't want to struggle for parking, right? I want to park, get out of my car and walk in the door. Yeah. I don't want to have to walk really far. I want to 10 steps. Right, maybe twenty. So you know, Mary, we talked about um, the speakers a little bit before, but I don't think we've got into it with enough detail. So let's just talk about like who's going to be there. Like, why should I come if I if I really want to learn from these experts? Who are these experts that you've been that that you brought in that you really want to learn from? I'm really glad you asked. So obviously, you guys are going to be there. I'm excited. I think that's going to be a really fun a really fun experience. And you guys you guys are known here locally to be awesome speakers. You go to a lot of the PMI events. Mm-hmm. Right. I've heard you speaking at PDD Day. I've heard you speaking at some of the chapter events locally for, for PMI. And I know you've done other events. So I think uh, I think that's going to be awesome. I'm thrilled that you guys had said yes right, and that you're going to join us. We've also got Gunter Verheyen, who's the author of A Pocket Guide for Scrum. Awesome, right? Yep. Um, Ryan Ripley, Todd Miller, the co-authors of Fixing Your Scrum. We've got Carmen mm-hmm. Allison coming in from Stanford University. So exciting. We've got Don McGreal, who's coming in, who's the author of The Professional Product Owner. We've got Avi, who's coming from Scrum Inc., right? Scrum at Scale. We've got some Kanban experts. We've also got local leaders, people who have done Scrum locally and have succeeded with that. So we've got Michelle, who's coming from um, WPS Health Insurance. We've got Moira, who's going to be speaking about the Agile Transformation for Human Resources at WPS Health Insurance. Um, and we've got other local leaders, Sub-Zero will be attending. So I'm, I'm excited. I think this is going to be fun. We're going to have a nice mix of experts from Scrum, from Kanban, local leaders who've succeeded with this. Um, I think it's going to be fun. I'm also really excited for Keith uh, McCandles, the, the co-developer of Liberating Structures, right? Like we use those all the time in our trainings and just any meeting. Like, And so just like to see him speak in person and get to meet him, I think that'll be really that'll be really interesting for me. You know, I'll give you a little tidbit about him. So uh, for our morning, uh, um, you know, normally you see a morning keynote, right? And we'll, we'll have some morning topics and some a morning a morning keynote. But Keith is going to come in and do a liberating structure with us, which I'm yeah. super excited about. He has told me that he's going to facilitate a conversation with everybody who's there, no matter how many mm-hmm. there are. So I'm excited to see, you know, the master at work in terms of facilitation. How do we make sure that we, we come up with, outcomes from that many people have it how do we yeah. facilitate a discussion with that many people and what are you forecasting for people like what are you hoping for like yep I'm, I'm hoping we'll get in the range of 400 i think that'd be a great mix of folks i think it would be um give us a, a lot of networking opportunities and an ability to connect with those kind of outside our regular our regular circle yeah awesome so yeah. scrumday.org correct correct scrumday.org easy All enough right. to remember yeah yeah um, Lots of information out there. You can you can take a look at our speakers. I also have, uh, you know, there's a speaker page with list out all the speakers. But if you go to news, we also have information. Spotlight articles are coming out every week about the various speakers um, and also about the various sponsors that will be attending. If you're interested in purchasing tickets, you can purchase those online at scrumday.org. You can also look into sponsorship opportunities at scrumday.org or sign up as an exhibitor as well. We're looking forward to 
hopefully seen some people who listen to the podcast show up at Scrum Day uh, in Madison in September. It should be awesome. Um, we'll make sure to leave the, the information in the show notes so you can check that out. Uh, I'm curious, Mary. So we've we've worked together some in the past, and since then you've you know I guess part of uh, how you're you're sponsoring and running Scrum Day is also through your company, right? So your company, Rebel Scrum, correct? That's it. Yep, Rebel Scrum has probably something to do with Star Wars. Now I know it does. Um, so how are you doing against like with the battle against the empire? Like, where are we at? What, what episode are we on in, you know, yeah. in the saga? We're, we're always at the empire strikes. Uh, no, what, actually, you know, I think we're probably going to be at, yeah. Empire strikes back. I think that's where we're going to be at. That's probably one of the best ones. Our return of the Jedi. It's, it's a, it's a toss up between which one is really the best of the star Wars franchise. Um, okay. I'm going to go on a leap and, and go with return of the Jedi. Best, best of all the the Star Wars franchise. Episodes. Okay, so so we I have mean, defeated you know one Death Star, but as we all know, <laughs> we have another one. And another right? one after that. There will and another be one and another one. Yeah, another Death Star. <laughs> Even a bigger Death Star. Right. And it's going to be labeled Command and Control. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, my my company is named after Star Wars. Um, the way this came about actually is I was a scrum master for a, a team, a reporting team, a number of years ago, and we were going to vote on team names. And I, I needed to come up with something creative. Right? We all we were all tasked with this idea of coming up with with suggestions for the team name. So I went home. And uh, my daughter says, well, what are you thinking about, mom? And I said, I'm trying to come up with a name for my for my team. I got to suggest a name. And she says, well, what do you do? And I, I explained to her scrum really quickly, right? this, this concept of small teams working together to deliver value, right? Collaborative cross-functional mm -hmm. teams. And she said, scum? No, I, no, it's not scum, honey. It's scrum, scrum, right? She said, like Star Wars? And she, she's the one who came up with this idea of, well, what about Rebel Scrum? And I was like, oh, that's genius. And so I, I came to the team with that suggestion of Rebel Scrum, and they voted it in, actually. So she named the, the team name a number of years ago. And then as I was trying to come up with the company name some years after that, I was sitting down. I, I, that was the only one that, that really just resonated with me. And so I named mm -hmm. it Rebel Scrum, right? It's it's It speaks to Star Wars. It speaks to... This idea of small scrappy teams, right, working together to deliver value, right, freedom, right, in this case, but for Scrum team, it's, it's value, it's empowerment. Um, we're we're changing the way we work together, and um, that's why that's why I called it Rebel Scrum. It, it makes a lot of sense, you know. We're all change agents at heart, right? And you look at like rebels; they they tend to challenge the status quo and push things yeah. in different directions, where maybe you know. Whatever the current uh, structure is that is in control doesn't want to go, and so I, I like the the name Red Rebel Scrum. It's you know we're really trying to do something different, and I think it, you definitely illustrate that uh, with the with the name. And you know, anytime you pick a company name, it's got to resonate with you first, right? Like if you don't love it, like it, it, it's not going to be good. You're not going to like it later. So um, uh, definitely great thing that you followed your heart and just you know pick something that worked for you. Well, thank you, and, and you know it. It resonates. I, I know it makes my daughter feel good too, to know that this is named after story. her idea, and so it, yeah. it makes it for me, you know, a little bit of a little bit of family, a little bit of fun, and this mm -hmm. idea of let's change the world, let's do it. Yep. That's why we like, you know, for me, I honestly think a little bit of a little bit of glass half full for you, but I do think that Scrum makes the world a better place, because we're we're at our day jobs, right? At least for most of us, at least eighty eight hours a day, right? that day job needs to be pleasant and scrum is a a big way that we can make it more pleasant for those who are doing the work and for those who are receiving the work it's just it's a it's a much easier way to work together it just makes sense this is the way this is the way that that that, that things should be i don't know i guess we can pivot the conversation into what like what makes it that way like what makes it so pleasant what are the core things that make Scrum, a pleasant place to work. Why should somebody care? Why would a person doing Scrum or being on the team, why would they want to do it? What are your thoughts? Well, you know, for me, it's all about the people who are closest to the work know best how to accomplish that work, right? It mm -hmm. comes back to that, the new new product development game, you know, that was released at the Harvard Business Review in 1986. I completely believe in this idea of 
bring together this cross functional group of people, give them goals, right? Don't tell them, you know, every little nitpicky thing to do, but tell them what you want to have accomplished and let them figure out the way, the best way to do it. It's a better experience for those doing the work to feel empowered, to feel like, as we said earlier, developers want to change, they want to make a positive impact. So it, it feels better to work that way. And also you get better outcomes when you work that way, because they're the ones who know mm-hmm. best how to achieve that thing. Let them run, right? Bring in the best people and, and let them work together to achieve it. Knock down those barriers, right? Why should we have this idea of I've got to hand work to this person and that person and that person and six months later, they're going to bring it back to me and fix what I've forgotten, how I developed in the first place. That doesn't make sense. It never made sense, not for complex mm-hmm. work. Right. It makes sense in some environments, right? When you have a simple task, sure, yes. But when you have this idea of I'm creating something and it's going to be different every time I create a form, every time I create a product, it's, it's different, right? And so it makes, it just makes so much sense to work this way. Um, and I, I think, as I said, better outcomes, better experience, better all around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I us go back to like, I, I think the outcome and you're aligned around like something that like to be successful as a team, right? And like, it feels really good when you're on a team and you deliver and you get stuff to done and like you see the value. And that feels really good when you're a well-oiled machine and like I know what Chad's gonna do before he even does it, or I can just jump in with him and like we're just like in sync as a as a group of people just working towards a common cause. Like that in itself feels amazing, right? So like I think Scrum enables these things and just sets up an environment and a structure where people can like be the best versions of themselves because they get the collaboration with these other people and they like can create things that they never could have created. Like even today in that meeting that we were talking about, like we, we you couldn't have done that by ourselves. Even the three of us wouldn't have done that together. But when you get everybody together, we do the breakouts and we come back together and like uh, and some facilitation, like it's, it's an amazing thing what we can accomplish. It is. It really is, Jeff. I, I couldn't agree with that more. And the idea of using the right facilitation to bring that out of people is also important too. And that's why we've got liberating structures coming to the conference because the power of liberating structures, I think is underestimated, underappreciated. Mm-hmm. And I think um, I'm hoping that's one of the things people take away from this is the importance of good facilitation in yeah. bringing about change. Yeah. It, it's a superpower for yep. sure. So, well, it for, is a superpower. I mean, the, facilitation. Like I don't know when I was a, uh, I don't know, agile coach, young scrum master, you know, kind of just getting going, like being a really good facilitator got me into a ton of rooms where I probably didn't belong. And I got to learn a ton of things and get got to influence in different ways and uh, have different side conversations afterwards to influence. And so, I mean, whatever your superpower is, like if you don't know what it is, like facilitation could be it. it it's a very learnable skill and a lot of organizations need it. Yeah, Yeah, I I was going to add, I was going to say the same thing because Jeff and I talk about this all the time. Like facilitation is this like superpower that just has to be unlocked and liberating structures are great at doing that. Like it's, it's one of those things that you can't unsee in a good way, right? Like, oh, now that I know about liberating structures, I'm never going to want to attend a painful, boring, process heavy, statusy meeting ever in my life again, right? Like you just, you're, you're ruined in a good way. Um, and I think if anyone can leave, whether it's scrum day, or even if you're just hearing the podcast and you go investigate liberating structures after this, like it really does change. It's sort of like, I'm going to relate this back to your, uh, rebel scrum, right? Like in star Wars, it's like the force, like it's very strong in some people. And when, when there's like a Jedi level facilitator, everybody can feel it, right? Like you can, you can move things <laughs> in a different way. And and a young Padawan might struggle to make that impact because they're learning their facilitation skills, right? So I, I just feel like there's a there's a, a spectrum there. And liberating structures really help people take it to the next level. I mean, I'm speaking from experience. Like I I was I thought I I facilitated things relatively well. And then when I really discovered liberating structures, it it just took it to the next level. In large groups, especially, right? Microstructures for facilitating and scaling facilitation. It, I'd never even thought about facilitation that way until I discovered liberating structures. And I, I love that you brought the Pad One reference into that. That was fantastic, <laughs> just fantastic. And I would say, if you are a Pad One, then I suggest you you sign up for, or at least consider signing up for the Professional Scrum Facilitation Skills Class from Scrum.org. It's yeah. I think it's transformative. I think it's fantastic. And um, I, I, I've 
I've heard from people that it, it really helps them because you also get to practice facilitation in a safe space, which, you know, that's really invaluable to me. It is. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, you know, the coaching classes that I've taken too that were so transformative for me. That's what really made the difference. Like, you know, in a three day boot camp where you're practicing a coaching stance, you know, it's mocked, but you're still, you're going through the mo- mechanics and motions and it's always awkward and mechanical in the beginning. But when you, when you keep doing it, then in a real working environment in, in the real world, it, it just eventually it, it, it comes to you. Right. And then it becomes mm-hmm. second nature. Um, whether it's how to facilitate a, a terrible meeting, um, or, uh, not yeah. terrible, but facilitate, save a, t- a meeting from being terrible, I guess is what I meant to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I lost my train of thought, but it's, it, it, it's fun. Like the facilitation piece I think is worth the price of admission for, for scrum day alone. Um, and yeah, you definitely should run with that analogy for rebel scrum. You know, <laughs> you can have different yeah, like Jedi, Jedi level certifications or something for. <laughs> awesome. And then of course, when we attend status meetings, we know that those are the, you know, that's the dark side, right? That's like, the dark side. Absolutely. When you're in a meeting where there's one person talking and everyone's video is off and no one's engaged, that's the dark side. Yeah. Yeah. The dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't agree with that more. All right. This has been a great conversation, Mary. Thank you so much for joining us and talking to us all about Scrum Day. Um, we will put the, all the links to everything in the show notes. Um, at this time, is there anything else you want to plug before we... Uh, call it a day all right so you know why should you come to scrum day come to scrum day to connect come to scrum day to collaborate come to scrum day to to change right to change for the better that's what it's all about awesome so thanks mary this was uh, this was fun and obviously we'll see you at scrum day um but we hope to see everyone else there as well if you found value in today's episode share this with a friend until next time Get agile and stay agile.